Weight shift control 11 4 approaches and landings. The 180 degrees power off approach is an extension of the principles applied in the 90 degrees power off approach, involving gliding with the power off from a specified point on a downwind leg to a preselected landing spot. This approach aims to further develop a pilot's judgment in estimating distances and glide ratios. During the execution of a 180 degrees power off approach, the aircraft is flown on a downwind heading parallel to the landing runway, starting at a normal pattern altitude. The throttle can be brought back to idle between the downwind leg key position and the turn onto the base leg, depending on the height and distance from the runway. The throttle is closed and the weight shift control aircraft set to the best glide speed when abreast of or opposite the desired landing spot or location closer to the turn onto base if the weight shift control is further from the runway. The point at which the throttle is closed is the downwind key position. The turn from the downwind leg to the base leg should be a uniform turn with a medium or slightly steeper bank and the base leg should be positioned as needed for the altitude or wind condition. After reaching the base key position, the approach and landing follow the same procedures as in the 90 degrees power off approach. It's emphasized that while the key position is important, it should not be overemphasized or considered as a fixed point on the ground. The 360 degrees power off approach is characterized by the aircraft gliding through a 360 degrees change of direction to a pre-selected landing spot, with the pattern designed to be circular. The turn may be adjusted at any point to correct the flight path's accuracy. This approach is initiated from a position over the approach end of the landing runway or slightly to the side of it, with the aircraft headed in the proposed landing direction, usually starting from approximately 2,000 feet or more above the ground. After closing the throttle over the intended landing point, the proper glide speed is immediately established, and a medium bank turn is made to arrive at the downwind reference position opposite the intended landing spot. The altitude at the downwind reference position should be approximately 1,000 feet above the ground. The turn is then continued to arrive at a base leg key position. The angle of bank can be adjusted as needed throughout the pattern to correct for wind conditions and align the aircraft with the final approach. The turn to final should be completed at a minimum altitude of 300 feet above the terrain. Common errors in power-off accuracy approaches include distant downwind legs or overextension due to tailwind, inadequate wind drift compensation on the base leg, and attempts to stretch the glide leading to undershooting or forcing the aircraft onto the runway to avoid overshooting the designated spot. Emergency approaches and landings, particularly simulated engine-out scenarios, play a crucial role in developing a pilot's accuracy, judgment, planning, procedures, and confidence. During dual flights, Instructors may surprise students with simulated emergency landings by retarding the throttle and calling, simulated emergency landing. The immediate response should be to establish the best glide speed, trimming the aircraft if applicable. Maintaining a constant gliding speed is essential initially, as variations nullify accuracy in judging gliding distance and the landing spot. The choice of pattern and approach procedures depends on various factors such as altitude, obstructions, wind direction, landing surface, and distance requirements. Using normal gliding maneuvers, the pilot should reach the normal reference position at a standard traffic pattern altitude for the chosen landing area. The subsequent approach closely follows the procedures of a normal power-off approach, incorporating steep approach techniques if necessary. If the altitude is higher than the desired landing area, the pilot should make large, low-banked circles to establish downwind and final reference points. Once a field is selected, the student communicates it to the instructor and plans and executes a landing pattern. In case of poor field selection, a change to a better field within gliding distance may be permitted. The hazards of last-minute decisions, including excessive maneuvering at low altitudes, should be explained. Techniques like steep approaches and variations in the base leg position and turn on to final should be emphasized to correct misjudgments. Avoiding the common fault of descending too eagerly, students must remember to control speed and not arrive at the field's edge with excessive speed. The engine should be kept warm and clear during simulated emergency landings, with the student controlling the foot throttle and the instructor having a second throttle. Simulated emergency landing approaches should be terminated once it's determined whether a safe landing could have been made avoiding undue hazards or annoyance to people or property on the ground. Students should also be taught emergency flight deck procedures, developing the habit of performing critical checks, such as fuel quantity and magneto switch position, during training to enhance safety during actual emergencies. Using a checklist for these procedures is strongly recommended. Faulty approaches and landings can pose significant risks, and pilots need to be aware of various scenarios and the appropriate corrective actions. 
In cases of a low final approach, where the base leg is too low or wind velocity is misjudged, the aircraft may end up well below the proper final approach path. In such situations, considerable power may be required to gain altitude and intercept the correct approach path. Pilots should re-establish the correct approach attitude, reduce power, and maintain a stabilized approach. Avoid increasing pitch attitude without increasing power to prevent rapid deceleration and potential stall. If uncertainty persists, execute an immediate go-around. For a high final approach, perform a steep approach as necessary for the excess height. Refer to the steep approach procedures discussed earlier. In such cases, the wing operates near the critical angle of attack, risking a stall or rapid descent. Pilots should apply power to accelerate the aircraft, reduce the sink rate, and prevent a stall. This should be done at a sufficient altitude to re-establish the correct approach airspeed and attitude. If too slow and too low, consider executing a go-around. Power can be employed during the approach and roundout to compensate for errors in judgment. Pilots should be prepared to use the foot throttle while managing energy throughout the landing. Power can be added to reduce the descent rate, and after touchdown, the throttle should be closed to remove additional thrust. A high roundout, where the aircraft appears to stop moving downward temporarily, indicates a too rapid roundout. This results in the aircraft flying level, too high and too slow above the runway. To prevent a hard drop, reduce pitch attitude slightly to increase speed to approach speed while adding throttle to maintain altitude. After speed is increased and altitude maintained, gradually reduce throttle and speed for a normal descent with a regular roundout and touchdown. Starting the roundout too late or pushing the control forward too rapidly can cause the aircraft to balloon above the runway. Recovery requires prompt application of power, a lowering of the nose to increase speed, and a subsequent normal landing or a go-around if necessary. Excessive airspeed on final approach may result in the aircraft floating in ground effect. Maintain a position inches above the runway, gradually rounding out until speed decreases for a normal touchdown. If the aircraft is well past the desired landing point and the available runway is insufficient, perform a go-around immediately.